What's up YouTube? Um, I want to talk about something in this video and uh, I really want to focus on the Predator and one of the big things in my next couple of videos that I really want to talk about is the governor removal on a Predator and when that makes sense, when it doesn't make sense. Uh, so to preface this video before we get into it, um, as you know everybody's got a video on a Predator, everybody's got a video on a governor removal, everybody's got an opinion on a gov governor removal on a Predator, and there's pretty much two sides of the fence. You got guys who think you should never remove the governor, and if you do, the minute you exceed that rated RPM, you know, you're going to throw a rod and the flywheel is going to blow up. The other group of guys are kind of think that you can install stiffer valve springs and rev it to the moon and just leave the flywheel and the, and the conrod alone. And uh, <clears throat> one thing you see a lot on YouTube right now is, uh, well, the last couple of years, I guess, is um, a bunch of tutorials on governor removal. So without getting too far into it, if you're on a shoestring budget, you're trying to mod your Predator for your go-kart, and you just want to get some more RPM out of it, you get a little more top speed, um, and you're maybe inexperienced with tools, or you don't have all the tools you need, you don't have a torque wrench, there's other options um, that are easier and cost you nothing. And I don't know why they're not as widely talked about as the governor removal and the other things, because it's just as viable option and you're really not missing out on much. So really, when you come into a stock Predator, you get a Predator bone stock, and you go into it. You drain the oil, you pull the gas tank, you go into the block, you take the side cover off, all that good stuff. None of it's terribly hard, but it does require some tools. And you remove the governor. You take it and you do it the right way. You take everything out. Um, you're not jerry-rigging the governor arm back, um, anything like that. You do the whole shebang, you come in here and you, you bend you up the new linkage rod and that's all good and fine. That's going to get you about 5200 RPM. Um, some guys will say, some guys are going to say 6000 RPM, but the stock valve springs in a Predator, Hemi, non-Hemi, doesn't matter, they're going to float around 5200 RPM. Um, and that's fine. Some, some people treat that as a rev limiter, which I would advise against that. Um, when you're floating the valves or fluttering the valves, whatever you want to call it, that's not good on your valves. It's not good on your valve seats. It's not good on your valve guides. It's just not good on your valve train. Um, you should try and avoid that if at all possible. So if you're mechanically inclined, you want to go in here and pull the governor out and get 5,200 RPM out of it, then go ahead. Um, the thing that I, the reason I'm not going to do that is because my ultimate goal is to achieve six or 7,000 RPM. To do that, I'm going to have to put a billet rod in it. So I'm not going to open up the case and go through a gasket and the hassle of removing a governor to put it back together, put oil in it, get 5,200 RPM to turn around, and put a, a billet con rod in it. Three months later, open it back up, go in when I can just do it all in one shot. Um, if you have no plans of going that far, you just want the extra RPM, then there's really no need to even go into the motor. Um, and this is kind of coming from my experience with racing carts, is that you can get 5,000 RPM out of a Predator motor with the governor intact, without going in the governor, going in the motor, nothing. You don't have to do anything. And it's not janky, it's not half-assed. Um, there's nothing wrong with it. There's guys running every weekend on a local car track, running a stock Predator class that doesn't allow them to exceed 5,500 RPM and they can't touch the motor. These guys run 4,800 to 5,000 RPM, 20 to 40 laps. Um, some even do marathon, a couple hundred lap races. I mean, on an eighth mile track, that's 25 miles of sustained 4,800 or so RPM. And they do that and they have no issues at all with the governor come flying apart. You know, I've heard of it. Um, I've never seen it, so I can't attest to it. Um, I'm sure it's happened to somebody. But either way, um, 
So there's an easy way to do this. And, and what I've done here, I'm going to slide this one. This is all you have to do to get to this point. It's very easy. So take your tank off. You don't even have to take it completely off. Um, disconnect your fuel line fitting. I usually find a little bolt that I can stick in there and it seals it off, it doesn't leak. Uh, you got one eight millimeter bolt here and then you've got two 10 millimeter nuts that go on the back of the tank studs and then the tank will come off, it's out of your way. So it's probably not even fairly obvious to anyone who hasn't maybe seen one, but I actually don't have one in a stock configuration. These are both um, configured exactly the same. These were both set up for car racing to be bone stock. The only thing I can change is a plug and, and the governor. So the only thing you're changing is this spring location and that spring location. That's it. That will get you 5,000 RPM on a bone stock Predator. The governor's still there. The governor still surges and acts on its own like a governor should. You don't have to do anything different. Take your tank off. This spring here, it's in the second hole position, normally is in line with this rod. They're normally one in the same. Um, they could be like this. Uh, it's been a while since I've done one. Um, but generally speaking, that spring is generally in that hole, that first hole, if I remember correctly. And this is something that you can experiment with. It's, uh, you know, this is something that you can do in two minutes with it on your mini bike, go-kart, whatever. Just move this spring and you'll find that uh, as you move that spring around, it'll change the RPM in which the governor kicks in. So my big thing with this is that for 200 less RPM, this is a whole lot better than someone who's inexperienced, doesn't have the tools, doesn't have the resources, or just doesn't want to bother with it until they get their internal parts. This will get you 5,000 RPM. And you don't have to take my word on it. Um, Google local race cart tracks in your area, and then you'll find their website. Go on the website and look at their classes. If they have a Predator class, chances are they're running a box stock Predator class or whatever they're calling it, and they'll have the rules in there. And you'll see on these rules that they state that it uh, has to be run out of the box, that uh, you can't change anything, basically. And then they'll say 5,500 RPM max, and, and they can ask you to test that on a stand to verify. Um, so I... I don't have a tack right now or I would have left this on the cart, but I verified this with a Micron 4 AIM racing tack on both these motors and it's very common in the race cart world. So I'm not sure how this isn't very mainstream. So if you're looking for something to get a little more RPM out of your motor and you don't want to have to bend and make new linkages, you don't want to have to go and break into the motor, then this is a really good option and that's all you're changing change the springs around and just move them locations on this governor arm and then uh, just play with that I mean out that's all you're doing and you'll get some more bang for for no buck um, and I'm not scared to do uh, you know a governor removal I'm not one of these guys that's you know if you want to remove the governor have at it you know um, that's actually my next video on this motor here which is going on the drift trike which doesn't look like much of a drift trike because it's in parts until I weld the hangers on tomorrow morning. Um, my next video which could be tonight or probably tomorrow night I'm gonna take this motor down and I'll strip it down and I'll pull the governor out of it and I'll block all the passages off and we'll remove everything we don't need and then I'll put it back together and I'll do that in a tutorial and uh, not that there isn't already a bunch and I'm also gonna do on this motor um, this was just the easiest one for me to show you this. I'm going to put this back together and I'm going to do a video on the NR Racing Stage 2 stuff um, and that's going to go on this motor with the governor intact. I'm going to go ahead and put the 18 pound valve springs on and leave the governor in set at 5000 RPM until 
I can get around to getting a rod. I've just been lazy. I need to order the rod and order the billet flywheel because I plan on throwing a cam in this and, and, and at least turning it up to 6,700 RPM, which is where I think that these 18 pound valve springs will float. So there you have it, 5,000 RPM. Um, I said take five minutes, try it yourself, and I think you'll be surprised with the outcome. All right, thanks guys.